Hi everybody, how are you doing? In today's video, I'm going to be giving you my top 10 pieces of advice for growing a wedding photography business. So if you're just starting out in wedding photography, or if you've been shooting for a while, but would just like some advice, this is the video for you. And I'm gonna be doing it all in 10 minutes. So let's crack on. So if you're new to my channel, I'm a wedding photographer based in Manchester in the UK. I've been photographing weddings for 15 years now and in that time I've covered over 400 weddings. I also run regular wedding photography workshops and offer online training through my Patreon. All the advice in this video is from my own first-hand experience of running my own wedding photography business. Oh, and if you're interested in how I started out in wedding photography, then this video up here is the one for you. So on with the tips. These tips are in no particular order, but I feel that they will all be extremely useful if you are looking to start a wedding photography business. I'm going to cover my 10 tips in 10 minutes, but if you'd like me to go over any of these subjects in more detail, please let me know. So let's start the timer. First up, a good website is essential. Yes, you want to have a good presence on social media, but your website is still the front window of your business. And it's very hard to be successful without a good website. From a usability point of view, your website should be easy to use, have a clean layout and load quickly. You can check the speed of your website using online tools like GT Metrics. And from a business point of view, your website should convey your very best images and your style. Even if you offer other types of photography, I would focus your website on wedding photography only only. Otherwise, you can just look like a jack of all trades. If you do offer other types of photography, I would personally suggest having separate websites for those. And this is very important, always check what your website looks like on mobile and how quickly it loads on mobile. Because if you look at the analytics for your website, you will almost certainly find that over half of your traffic will be coming from mobile devices. So it is essential that your site looks good on mobile. Now, if you're looking at creating a website from scratch, for me, the best option is to use WordPress, as that way you will have a huge of flexibility in terms of what you can do with the site and my advice is to choose a theme like flow themes or Divi but if you want something easier to use and less techy then a Squarespace website would be a great option as well and for a website to be really effective it needs people to be able to find it so good SEO is essential SEO stands for search engine optimization and it refers to how well your site can be found in Google searches SEO is a huge subject and even if I made an hour long video on the subject I wouldn't be able to cover it all but just know that good SEO is more or less essential especially when you are first starting out in wedding photography the biggest factors that will help your website rank well is good site structure good site speed quality backlinks from other related websites and good quality content lots of good quality content if you have a WordPress website the Yoast plugin can be very useful to help you optimize your site and you can monitor your SEO through online tools such as Moz and if you want to track your rankings on your phone then SEO Edge is a great app to use there are videos within my Patreon which cover SEO for wedding photographers in lots of detail so if this is something Something that you would like to learn more about you will definitely find those videos very useful and following on from your website a good social media presence is more or less essential for wedding photographers the most important social media in my opinion is Instagram my advice to Instagram is that less is more so only post your absolute best images very often I see wedding photographers posting a really great image but then following that an image which isn't quite as good and that can really dilute the overall quality of your Instagram feed use relevant hashtags as well to help your work be found and also use Instagram stories and reels. My advice would be to keep your Instagram feed to just your best images but use the stories as a way of showing your personality. Again there are videos in my Patreon in which I talk about this in much more detail. A Facebook page is not quite as useful as it used to be but you definitely still want to have one and although I don't use it personally I would also recommend having a presence on Pinterest and YouTube as well even if it's just to post slideshows from your friends favorite weddings. Remember to keep your branding and tone of voice consistent across your website and all your social media. Keeping your brand consistent online is very important to the overall image of your wedding photography business. 
Next up is CRM software. CRM software or studio management software is something that many wedding photographers won't consider when first starting out, but trust me, they will make your life so much easier. And the sooner you start using this software, the better. As you get busier and start to get bookings, keeping on top of everything can become quite tricky. Well, very, very tricky. So it's essential that you have a way of keeping track of those bookings, your diary, what money you have received and what money you're owed. Trust me, for a wedding photographer, you have to have complete faith in the system that you use or you run the risk of the nightmare scenario of double booking yourself. Does it even bear thinking about? In my opinion, pen and paper or making your own spreadsheet just isn't good enough. Studio management software will help you do this in a really easy and efficient way. There are lots of really good pieces of software out there such as Light Blue and Sprout Studio, but my top recommendation would be Studio Ninja as it is just so easy to use. As well as keeping track of your bookings, calendar and finances, you can also use CRM software to automate how you reply to inquiries. I literally couldn't run my business without using CRM software. Tip five is related in a way because it's easy to overlook, but in my opinion, it's essential, and that is to use a good accountant. I won't dwell on this one because every country will have its own systems and I don't know about those, but when you're running a business, having a good accountant will take away so much stress. We're photographers. We want to be out there taking photographs, not reading up on accountancy. So having someone do this for you and having the peace of mind that everything is being done correctly is extremely important. Again, it is easy to overlook this if you're just starting out, but my advice is definitely to use an accountant as soon as possible. Next up is education. Luckily, there is now so much wedding photography education available. When I started out in 2006, the only things that were available were just books in the library, very old school. Uh, whereas now, you can learn so much about wedding photography online. So make use of that. Resources like YouTube, Creative Live, SLR Lounge, and if I can say so myself, my own Patreon can help you learn so much and it's going to fast track your knowledge and your skills in just about every aspect of wedding photography. Once you have the equipment which you need to shoot a wedding, investing in education will be far, far more beneficial for you than just buying another latest lens. Having a better lens will not make you a better photographer, but educating yourself definitely will do. Next up is a big one and it's to build friendships with other wedding photographers. There are really no downsides to becoming friends with other wedding photographers. Not only will you learn from each other, but you will then have a network who you can bounce ideas off and ask for advice. You can share referrals and shoot for each other, lend equipment to each other, and just generally support each other. Being friends with other wedding photographers also gives you peace of mind. For example, if you're ill on a wedding day, you'll hopefully then have people who can step in for you and help you out at short notice. In many ways, wedding photography can be quite a lonely profession, so having a network of wedding photographer friends can be a huge help. When I first started out, many photographers didn't want to share and help each other out because I think they just saw each other as being competition. But trust me, that approach will only hold you and your business back. So get in contact with wedding photographers in your area, suggest meeting up for a coffee or doing a shoot together. There are so, so many upsides to doing this, and those upsides can not only have a huge impact on your business but also everybody else's too. Now following on from this another huge piece of advice is to build relationships with other wedding suppliers such as venues, makeup artists, videographers, wedding entertainers, florists, the list just goes on. Again this can only have a huge positive impact on your business. By sharing images with wedding suppliers and allowing them to use them on their own sites and social media not only will you be building friendships but you will also be improving your own SEO and increasing your chances of future wedding bookings as a result. In the same way, I would recommend sending your photographs to the wedding venues that you've worked at or offering to provide those venues with sample albums for free, which they can then use to show to couples who are looking around their venue. The wedding venue is usually the first thing which couples book when they're planning their wedding, so having a venue recommend you is huge. 
Now, most of the tips that I've given you so far are more focused on the business side. But of course, regardless of how long we've been shooting for, we all want to keep on improving our photography skills. And in my opinion, one of the best ways to do that is to organize style shoots. Organizing a style shoot can be really easy. All you really need is a model and a cheap wedding dress, but the advantages are huge. The more time that you spend shooting, the better you will become as a photographer. And style shoots are the perfect way to practice because you're going to be shooting with absolutely zero pressure. You can practice posing, lighting, new techniques. And the best thing of all is that you're going to end up with fantastic images, which you can then use on your social media to really help you stand out. Now, following on from my earlier tips, you could also invite other photographers and wedding suppliers to get involved too. For a relatively small cost, you have so much to gain from setting up style shoots. Now the last tip is one simple word, but whether you're just starting out as a wedding photographer or you've been shooting weddings for years, it is just about essential. Practice. Running a wedding photography business involves so many different things as we've spoken about in this video, but at the end of the day, the success of your business will come down to your ability as a wedding photographer. So practice, use your camera as often as you can because whatever it is you're photographing, no time that you spend with your camera in your hand is wasted time. And if I've timed this correctly, that is 10 minutes. Now, just before I finish this video, I wanted to say a few other bonus tips, but I'm gonna keep these extremely short. Firstly, offer to second shoot for other wedding photographers to improve your skills, your knowledge of weddings, and grow your portfolio. Make sure that you have a contract which will protect you and your couples. Take out insurance. Make sure that your branding is good and your logo is good because we want to appear obviously very professional. Enter competitions to give yourself marketing opportunities. And again, I can never say this enough, practice. So thank you very much again for watching and I will see you next time.